Very, Mr Rob, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. The government has found itself this morning in a near impossible position, held to ransom, I think it's fair to say, by northern leaders, backbenchers who are saying, don't you dare increase the tier that we are in in the morning. What's your next move? We'll keep talking. I mean, you're, you're right, we're, it's a challenging position. I think what the people of... Uh, Manchester, Liverpool, London, across the country expect is all our political leaders to work together. I think we've done that very effectively actually in most areas. We've worked with London, we've worked with Steve Rotherham uh, in Merseyside. Obviously we want to keep working with Andy Burnham in Manchester. Um, we put a really uh, strong economic package in place. We're taking targeted restrictive measures only to the extent necessary in the local areas. In Manchester, we've seen cases at 470 per 100,000, so it is important to take this action. And that's the way we steer through this challenge uh, without ending up with a national level lockdown. So we'll keep talking, we'll keep working. Obviously, uh, in the last resort, the government has the powers to proceed in any event, but, but we'd much rather work with the local leaders if it's all possible. Is that you threatening Andy Burnham? No, no, no threats. Um, it's just the, the, the facts of life, which is that we want to work. We're striving to work with all the local leaders. Uh, the support is there, the, the economic, the financial support, the support for test and tracing in those areas where they're uh, very high risk. Um, and, and we understand the challenges of, of the local authorities and the local mayors. That's, but, but that's why we've had arrangements with Sadiq Khan in London. We've put in place arrangements with Steve Rotherham in Merseyside. It, it ought to be possible in Manchester and Greater Manchester. And, and uh, you know, I've got lots of respect for Andy Burnham, but I don't think we can... Uh, I think you used the language of uh, being held to ransom or held hostage. I, I don't think that's right for the people of Manchester. I don't think it's right for the people of this country. We must be able to take targeted measures now to avoid uh, national-level restrictions or lockdowns later. OK, how much longer are you going to give the negotiations? Because, you know, with all negotiations, there has to be a, a time scale, doesn't there? Well, I'm, look, I'm not directly involved in them, so I'm not going to set um, deadlines. The, 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 the willingness to talk and engage and to work with local leaders is always there. We're continuing talks with, Barn, uh, with, with Lancashire um, uh, leaders. We, we want to get uh, uh, that deal done as well, or those arrangements put in place. But I think it's incumbent on all sides. Um, and that's what I would uh, think the, the, that our voters, our residents, they'd want the party politics to be put to one side. I do think, Kay, it's crazy that you've got Andy Burnham resisting targeted restrictions and localised measures in Manchester, where you've got Keir Starmer in London calling for a national level circuit break lockdown for three weeks across the board. That, that, that feels to me like politics in London, politics in Manchester. We just want to work with all the local leaders for the best interests of those communities and the country at large. I think Andy Burnham said he would be happy with the three-week lockdown. It's when it becomes the disparity between the north and the south that he is unhappy with. How close are we to uh, a circuit breaker or whatever you want to call it? Well, just let's look at that for a second. That's, that's crazy to say that, we were, that, that one area would take restrictions, but only if the rest of the country also has those restrictions. When if you look at Manchester, the cases are 470 uh, per 100,000, where they're much, much lower, and the risk is much lower elsewhere. It can't be right to say, well, we would only have um, uh, those restrictions in, in our area uh, if everyone has to, when the, the challenge and the problem isn't the same everywhere. So, but, but you ask about a national lockdown, and we want to avoid it. Uh, we think that Keir Starmer is uh, yeah, obviously looking to the politics of this, but I think the right thing, both on public health grounds, but also supporting the economy, supporting jobs, livelihoods, supporting our society, the most vulnerable in it, is to avoid a second national lockdown. The way to do it is with the tiered approach that we've advocated. That will only work, the scientists tell us, if everyone really leans in and implements it to the maximum. And that's what we hope all the local leaders will do and everyone uh, at home will do as well. I'm glad you mentioned the scientists. Um, as far as test and trace is concerned, the World Health Organization's special envoy for global uh, COVID, that's Dr David Nabarra, I'm sure you're aware of his work, he's often on the programme. Uh, the UK should see that it's in the bottom of the league table when it comes to test and trace, and it's a shambles. Well, it's just not true. If you look at our testing rate, 
you know, forget the commentary, the rate, it is uh, the best per capita in Europe. Um, we're, we're learning all the time with it, uh, with the testing and tracing uh, the, the dynamic, but it's been effective uh, in many ways and we want to get the capacity up even higher to 500,000 tests per day by the end of the month. Um, we'll take all advice, but it's, but it's not true to say we're bottom of the, of, the, of the league because if you look at the testing rate per capita, we're ahead of uh, any country in Europe. Heading the wrong way, though, isn't it? During the uh, week ending 7th of October, test and trace reached 62.6% .6 of people. The week before, it was almost 70%. It does ebb and flow a bit, and there are various different technical reasons and local reasons for that. But our, our, um, one of the advantages of taking a localised approach is that we can learn from what works most effectively. And actually, I'll pay tribute to the local councils. They've done a great job with the testing and tracing, which is why one of the things we're doing with the tiered approach in local areas that go to very high risk, we're giving extra support, uh, financial and, and logistical support, for them to do the testing and tracing, which has is, which is actually proved pretty effective. And you're giving some advisers uh, to the government uh, £25,000 a day. Five people are, are Ed Conway discovered. You were paying them uh, £25,000 a day to work on this test and trace uh, scheme and app. thought you told Andy Burnham you were strapped for cash. I don't know those specific details, but what that shows you is how seriously we're taking the test and tracing. And in, look, £200 billion has been put into the economic uh, support coming through this pandemic. So uh, the, the point I would make to Andy and, and others is there's a huge financial support package that's put in place, but there must be limits to that because we've got to pay for that. The businesses have got to pay for that. The taxpayers have got to pay for that. That's why the balanced approach we've taken, the targeted approach that we've taken, is such that preserves life and, and the NHS capacity, protects the public health. But also, we're, we're keen to keep uh, and absolutely striving to keep all the jobs running, the businesses open. We've protected 12 million jobs through this uh, crisis. We, we, we're putting the support in place, but we really need local leaders to lean into this. Most have. I'm, I hope Andy does. Um, but we need everyone to play their role. Yeah, you talk about taxpayers. A five-person team of management consultants being paid 25 thousand pounds a day to work on the system 25 thousand pounds a day to work on the system come on mr rudd that cannot be acceptable that cannot be acceptable well um i haven't seen those specific numbers but of course it would depend also what is being paid for not just the people involved but you're right to say uh, test and trace has been a resource intensive exercise and we want to get it right. You've on the one hand given me the criticism and the other uh, I've explained that the rate has been uh, well ahead of anyone in Europe but we are absolutely striving to make it as uh, sharp, as effective as possible oh, because sorry. we know okay. that's one of the important tools. I'm giving you the opportunity the this morning Foreign Secretary to condemn those figures. Um, they're from our Ed Conway, our economics editor. You know that he's very thorough in his work. You can see it on Twitter what the, the uh, the workings behind that, but £25,000 a day uh, for management consultants, you, you can't accept that as being acceptable in any way, shape or form. I've read Ed's books, but I haven't seen his Twitter this morning. I've been focused on other things. But look, we'll go away and, uh, and um, take a look at that, I'm sure. But the reality is we've been very careful with targeting the funding uh, that, that, that has been put out. I, the the DHSC and the others will be able to speak to th that specific issue. But we haven't been no, slow to fund. I'm not asking. OK, okay you've funded. not seen That's it. The, I get it. I know, I haven't I'm seen sorry, that data. I'm sorry okay, for you a second. You've not, you've like you've not seen, seen the specific data. tweet. I'm pointing in the direction of it. I'm asking you to comment on it as as a fact. It is a fact that five people are being paid £25,000 a day, management consultants, whereas some other people are being asked to have 80% of the minimum wage to live on. This is your opportunity, representing the government this morning, to say, that's not acceptable. Yes, but I haven't seen the facts, and so what you're asking me to do is rely on your presentation. There is no journalist I trust more, Kay, than you, but I would want to look at the, the, it very carefully, see exactly what it covered, before I condemned, as you described it. What, what I can tell you, in relation to you asked the most vulnerable people, we've obviously put a huge amount of support in. We've preserved 12 million jobs. The combination of the job support that we're putting in and the increase in universal credit means, as Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, said, that someone on a, a low wage, a minimum wage, uh, one of the most vulnerable 
vulnerable people in this crisis would still be getting, with the support we're providing, 90% uh, of, their, of their pay. We are absolutely focused on those who have been suffering the most, whether it's from the pandemic or whether it's from the economic and social okay. challenges of, the, uh, of this crisis, and we'll okay. continue to do so. Um, another couple of quick subjects that we need to deal with, not least uh, Brexit. Can you give us a cast iron, iron guarantee that we will get a trade deal? Well, you can't give any cast iron deal because it depends on the other side. And I think we are disappointed and surprised by the outcome of the European Council. The Prime Minister had a good conversation with Ursula von der Leyen. We were told talks would intensify. Some of that language has been left out of the European Council decision uh, that, that was put out. We've been told that uh, it must be the UK that makes all of the compromises in the uh, days ahead. That, that can't be right in a negotiation. Uh, so we're surprised by that, but the Prime Minister will be saying more on this later today. Yeah, it always comes down in the end to fish, doesn't it? I remember, I'm old enough to remember the Cod Wars. Um, the uh, French want to be able to fish in our waters. Are we going to let them or not? Well, it's not really a question of whether they'd be allowed to fish in our waters. It's a question of the extent. And the EU line and the French line is effectively having our fishing industries been subject to EU rules for many years, as you describe, and that's had a, a huge decimating impact on the fishing industry. We must keep the UK access to our own waters, having left the EU as an independent coastal state, permanently low. That can't be right. That's, a, that's not so, an interest that will just be haggled away. That's a point of principle. Um, having said that, we are close. There's only two issues, fisheries and the, the, the so-called level playing field issues left. Uh, with goodwill on both sides, we can get there, which is why we're a bit surprised by the outcome of the European Council um, uh, uh, that, that was held this week. OK. Now, I'm devastated you've not been looking at my Twitter feed this morning, but I'm sure that you have been looking at the front page of The Times, and they've got a story uh, about um, a reported Russian disinformation campaign to undermine the Oxford University uh, vaccine trials. What do you know about that? Well, um, first of all, any attempt to be using cyber attacks for uh, either criminal or, or profit advantage by anyone is absolutely reckless, irresponsible criminal uh, at a time where countries should be coming together to come up with a global vaccine that we can all benefit our peoples with. Um, uh, the, I've, I've seen what AstraZeneca have said about this. We fully support AstraZeneca doing a huge effort to try and get this virus uh, vaccine to market so that we can get it out and get people vaccinated. Really important, uh, innovative way through this crisis. And we know that Russia has got a track record um, in this area. Uh, previously, uh, we've commented and called them out on it. Um, but anyone trying to basically uh, sabotage the, the efforts of those trying to develop a vaccine, I think are, are deeply reprehensible and, and it's, pretty un, it's unacceptable and unjustified in any circumstances. OK, almost out of time. Just want to ask you quickly about Marcus Rashford. You know, of course, that he's got a petition to try to get uh, kids who can't afford it to be fed when uh, school holidays are in place. You've given him a gong. Are you willing to give him the courtesy of having this heard uh, discussed further in Parliament? Well, Parliament will decide what it discuss. I pay tribute to Marcus Rashford. He seems to me like a really smart young man. He's talking from the heart. We really understand that. And I mentioned earlier the, the, what we've done to make sure the very most vulnerable in our society are protected. I think we are in a different situation uh, than we were previously when he made what was a very valuable intervention because schools are open. We've put more money in, emergency money uh, for local authorities precisely to deal with these sorts of scenarios. So we'll, we'll always listen to what Mark has got to say, but I, I think we've put the right package in place already. Um, and and of course, Parliament can debate these issues, and it's quite right that they should. OK, so the fact that it's gone over 100,000, which should automatically trigger it being uh, discussed in Parliament, that's going to happen, yeah? Well, the House authorities decide those sorts of things. But look, the, the government doesn't control Parliament. I, you know, the, uh, the MPs do, and they'll debate any issue that they wish to. And I'm sure uh, that, that, that there'll be people that want to raise the issues that Marcus has raised. And we understand, we've got a huge lot of time for, um, for, for listening to his account and his insights into this. I know he's talking from the heart, um, and I, 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 you know, we take it seriously. But all I'd say is that we've put, uh, uh, you know, precisely because we listened to him first time round, uh, we've put a really uh, targeted, careful package of, of measures in place and support in place for precisely the children and the family that he's speaking up for. 
OK. Uh, time is against both of us. I'm going to have to let you go. Next time we chat, please do come into the studio. It's much more fun. It's nice to talk to you as always. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Arb. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kate.